Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it might be for you. It's obviously morning for me. This is the Wix Online meeting 12.6, which means we have 12.8 left before we get to 13, which I think will be a full-on status meeting, which will probably be in the next year since everybody's probably going to be gone next year being, or next week being uh, the Christmas holiday and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, a quick reminder, uh, these meetings are recorded. So those people that can't be here at this time slot can catch up on what we're doing. I'm a little bit behind on uploading them, but I will get that done this afternoon. So without further ado, let's go jump into bugs because that's what we're doing right now is uh, working our way through all the bugs. We have 236, which means it's time for people to start dropping their numbers in. I'm going with the big old number 60 just because I think we can do it. Plus. I'd like to see us get down into the hundreds um, in a big way by the end of this week. The low hundreds would be awesome. All right. Uh, you ready to roll, Bob? I'm ready to go. All right, cool. I want to merge two MSIs using bundles. That's not... Oh, this is an email. Try to implement that thing in Wix Edit. Yeah. Yeah, Wix said it doesn't support. Okay. Uh, this is an email, right? They should go talk to Wix users. Or go talk to Wix edit, which isn't us. Yeah. I'll add a note that Wix 3.6 is required. Right. If I recall how Wix edit works, they actually ship Wix. So it's definitely not. Since yep. it hasn't had a release in, what, a year and a half? Yeah. So they should go talk to them about making another one. Verb target file pulls in files from components that are being excluded during the build process with that. Well, no. <laughs> it can't. Yeah. So, I don't believe post a sample that demonstrates the problem. Um, well, we would be we would that. be broken all over the place if this was true. So, yes. uh, can Can we resolve this as no repro and have them provide more information to us? I don't want this bug sitting around. That works for me. Yeah, all right, cool. Let's do that because there's no, we'd be in big trouble if that was true. All right, we're back into, oh no, four days ago, four days ago. I have this harvest true on a project does nothing. Right, because there's all these things you have to turn on. To right. Me. The, I, I sent this back to triage just because of the follow-up well, comments. Should be follow removed from votive. All right, I'm fine with that. That or go fix it. But whichever way. I'm I'm ambivalent. Do we say yes? And there are many bugs to go have this fixed. So rather than remove it, it'd be better if someone wanted to go off and fix it, or. We could go, yes, this could remove it, and we could close all those other bugs. It's, it's kind of, which one do we want? Well, I was thinking the simplest case of of adding something to the to the description that shows up in the, what do you call it, property browser. Oh, all right. Seems reasonable. Whatever. Uh, 3x, and someone could add more information about this being disabled. Yeah, that works for me. All right. Yeah. Class ID. Now we're into four years ago. Four days, four years. Big jump. All right, here we go. There are a few attributes missing from the class element. Particular ones I need are toolbox and misc status. All right, yeah, we could add those. It's additive. It could be done in 3x. Works for me. All right. Add support for in-place updates of Complus applications. Windows installer trace files of folders. You can use your create a file as part of an application to a feature and component stalled states. I'm really surprised that Complus doesn't behave this way. It does behave this way. Oh, it was shown idle when updates are delivered to the customer for their customized things to be preferred. Yeah, this right. is just crazy. Well, this is the, I mean, this is not exclusive to Comp Plus, right? No, it's, it's the whole, whole question of, you know, are you configuring 
what's a default configuration? That's not a bad thing, but what does it mean when you're doing upgrades or, or servicing? Yeah, okay, we can take it, and 3x is another one of those cases. I, mean, I don't, there's no, there's no good pattern for that in the Windows installer. No, there isn't. Specified directory output, specify a different output directory for reference projects. Placing compile MSIs in the, without pulling, copying the output of the reference projects to the same directory. And building the output. I don't understand. If a different directory could be specified for the reference projects in the Wix app, but could be overridden by passing a property into the MS build test. Oh, they want us to be different than other projects, which is going to be even harder because we're going to be using common targets, which doesn't let us do that at all. Well, I, I'm, is this a harvesting thing, or I'm not? I'm not sure what the reference project output means. Well, it's kind of like if you want to change the out there for the, if you want to pass a project reference to a Wix project, that'll set, you have to set the out there or the output path, and then that will flow to all of the reference projects from there, right? That will then flow down, and it messes up all the other projects, I think. Ugh. Such that all of the reference project output go to a directory of my choosing. And the resulting in Messiah goes into a separate directory. <sighs> Without copying the output of all of the reference to the same directory. And I'm not sure why. Although, granted, this is four years ago, I'm, I'm, why would Votive behave differently? It doesn't. Yeah, I mean, this is all MS build, so. I think you can do this now. We probably got this fixed when we fixed our projects to be more like common targets. I'd say let's. Let's resolve this as fixed. Well, this is that whole thing. Resolve it as fixed, or do we go try to reproduce this error? I'm kind of like, I think we've cleaned this up in the last four years. I know we've cleaned up our targets well significantly. Is this, is this something as simple as passing property? See, this is weird. All of the reference project output go to a directory of my choosing, and the resulting MSI and Wix PDB go to a separate directory. Well, personally, I don't I think, think any projects do that. Well, and it's, and it's kind of silly. I mean, it, it breaks any kind of of incremental build. Because the only way to get that behavior would be to build a particular project, like some kind of master project. I also don't think we copy the referenced projects. I don't, I don't think so. We don't do that today. I'm no, I mean, all the, all the preprocessor variables, all the project-specific preprocessor variables that are created, they all refer to the output path of that reference project, which is in some other directory. All right, what do we want to do with this thing? Well, I'm not excited about the feature at all, whether it works today or not. So we put it in the suspended bucket, and if someone wants to come dig it out and give us a real awesome use case for it, we could do that? That would work for me. All right, let's do that. Okay. Not that excited about that feature anyway. Smart cabbing should be optional. Why? It only does good things. 
I'm curious about. We've that. actually fixed. Yeah, I remember this performance problem, and we've actually fixed that. So this this the reason for that, turning it off is gone. How does it how is it fixed? It puts the two files that are the same next to each other so that they're in the same uh, folder inside the cabinet, and then when it has to when it finds a double, it only has to skip back to one file, which is as fast as it can be. Cool. So, anyway, I don't. I don't think we should make an option. Be one more option that sometimes you want. No, just <laughs> we should fix smart cabbing so it's not slow, which I think we've done. Agreed. So no. Um, you know what was fixed. So. Yeah. Well, and this is also really old. So back in the early days, it was. Extra attribute for permission EX to control inherit options. Yes, we should do this feature. Although there's another feature just like it somewhere. <laughs> or we've had this has come up a few times, this whole controlling right. inheritance. So this is probably one of, one of the earlier requests for it. So yeah, we could take that in, in 3X, I think. Support for arch to NANT tasks. No, NANT gone. Sorry. So that's obsolete. I support. Uh, DTF. Uh, I suppose we could do that. I don't really care. I don't care. What do you think? Should we create? I, it wouldn't be bad, right, if it was in DTF. I want to move away from ISIS completely, but that's a different thing altogether. Um... I don't know what I don't know what what the ices require. Oh, it's just you, you, there's a you know these are the levels for ices that you can spit up the numbers that map to when an ice fails, and then you can specify these things: the ice level description, the help, the table that failed in the column, and then the primary keys. And this is how like Orca and those kind of tools and Wix show you the exact line number and all that kind of stuff. Sorry, so this is just this is a. a yeah, message. Yeah, it, I mean, it's just, you know, it'd be a class to help you do write ICES in DTF. I mean, it's fine. It's a reasonable idea. I don't want to do any more ICES, but someone might want to do ICES because, you know, there'll be smoke and all that kind of stuff. So we could take it, right? It wouldn't break anything by any means. Yeah, sure. I mean, we could add the same things for... Um, uh, uh, in the Wix CA custom actions. Uh, John Cooper says he has no audio. Uh, can other people hear us? Can we just, well, we must, because Sean gave me a number when I gave my number, so some people can hear us. All right. All right, good. So it seems to be an isolated issue to just John. Good luck. So <laughs> we, we could take this in 3X and... Sure, sure. Right. I don't, I mean, yeah, I don't see anyone doing the work, but yeah. <laughs> Maybe the person opened it. Ah, yes, remove dependency on metabase compatibility. Ah, this has been fixed. We now have native IS7 support. Oh, Back yeah. on our old day that we had to go through IS6 metabase for all IS7 stuff. Problem when we get to bugs that are four years old? Yeah, right. IS7, specify managed pipeline mode. <clears throat> if this isn't already supported, it could be supported. be a good thing, being able to set that. Right, reasonable feature. Add tools for extensions. I think we do this. I was looking at it now. And I think we do this. Because I were able to create the Wix uh, contrib custom actions out of it. So I think this is solved. Yes? Yeah. Sorry, I'm lamenting. Specifically, I need everything in this tree. Well, no. Specifically, should not be used when. I think yeah. it's all in the SDK folder. What you need is in the SDK folder now. So. Works for me. Yep. 
Please provide function to change existing registry item. You can write remove, but it doesn't work if users want to modify and restore it when uninstalling. Oh, they want restore. Right. <laughs> we want a custom action to write the restores functionality of fridge keys. I, uh, <laughs> I, I generally agree, but it's insanely challenging to do with the way the Windows installer works. Well, and and it, well, yeah, you you'd have to have a custom action to do the actual registry writing. Yep. And and it, it's, it's and there's zero guarantee that you're actually restoring a useful value. Yeah. Yeah, this is um, the this, the what is the Acme setup that that pops up if you try to uninstall a security update from like Windows XP. You know, you've installed the following things. Are you sure you want to roll back? And you know, there's like 50 other yeah updates. So what do we do with this bug? I mean, it's not wrong. It's just not the way the Windows installer works. I don't know what we do. I, I I would suggest suspended for this. Fine. I'm fine with that. I just I don't. Mm, uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's marginally useful if it were done well. Okay. I just don't think anyone's gonna be able to do it well because of all the inherent problems. Do we have copy folder now? Copy files ex. That's out there somewhere. But do we have that in Wix now? <laughs> My memory shot. I don't know what you mean. I don't know what the bug means. Oh, like oh, we have remove folders ex. Yeah, that's what we have. We do not have copy folder ex. No. Which would be the exact opposite of remove folders. It would create create copy files entries instead of remove file entries. Right. And you'd probably need a copy files ex and a remove files ex matched in order for it to uninstall correctly. Yes. Um, no, no. You could you could let an aside do that. Uh, really? Well, you yeah. It will it will remove files that are copy files. Okay, but you'd have the original copies would all have to still be in place for the copies to get removed. Well, this is this is the problem where you have Fine. to run the same. All right. So, um. And this is copy folder, not copy file. So this is the whole tree. It's the same as remove file. So Jacob brings up that copy file could take a star. So, all right. So I guess we could do this, right? It'd be remove folders. It'd be copy files ex. Yep. Which is awesome because copy files ends in an S. Um, all right. Wix Thank UI you. project type. It has some UI. I think it would be value to default project or otherwise create a new project that automatically includes a reference to Wix UI. We do this now, right? Or no? I forgot. Do we add a UI by default now? I don't think so. We don't? Uh, I don't think so. Well, it's a reasonable request. <laughs> it basically just says, let's go into our templates and make our templates better. Okay. <laughs> Someone could do that. What does the world need? We could take that. Wouldn't it be breaking, I don't think. Well, disagree? I don't know. Do we we wanna... could add them. Yeah, I might, we, we, might, we might have to add. Templates. But then we could deprecate the old ones if people are like, why do you have two of these? It's like, well, which ones do you like better? I vote for this one. Fine, use that one. Yay. Whatever. Yeah. All right. Web application side-by-side -side manifest support. The ability to install side-by-side -side assemblies and specify the manifest name in the web application element. I don't know IIS. Does that make sense? It does not make sense to me. Okay. Web application side by side manifest. But I don't know what that means. I didn't. I don't. Is this like in your web config you can put binding path or something? I'm I, shaking my head. I don't know. I have no idea. So do we keep the bug or do we suspend it or what do we do? Uh, we'll These fix ancient, yeah. with, with, you know. What, what, huh? <laughs> and oh, someone, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if someone wants to do it, I, I and they can explain what it is, okay. 
the galleries out there searching on the internet trying to figure out what the, blah, blah, blah. generalized interface to firewall didn't we have something like this better approach a better approach to realize request this and this so this is a bug to implement bug this is a feature to implement features um, no this is I think the same person opened those two bugs or at least one of them. Well, I know he implemented or opened one of them. Oh, I see. Basically, execute NetSH type things again. Yeah, but how do you roll that back and that kind of stuff? You don't. You don't. This. So I don't know. No. So no. Yeah. Cool. No, not on that one. And then we need to go do all the other firewall stuff, which is fine. You should go do that. Control the state of new or existing firewall exceptions. Well, we have the problem with the existing ones, which is that forever problem that we've had. To install a firewall, but enable it only current profile, leaving users to activate it in the other profiles. Is this just this is just a feature request? I don't know anything about firewalls. Let's see. The ability to oh. enable so, and disable so, on uninstallation. Oh, jeez. Well, okay, so fine, fine. To break it down, new new exceptions in the firewall. Um, Yes, it, it makes sense to be able to create a new exception in multiple profiles, leaving it disabled in everything except the current profile. Um, this is kind of like service control, right? The ability to control yeah. firewalls. Yeah, it, well, like, not for new ones. I mean... Well, yeah, I mean, you can treat it the same way. You're right. Um, I see I see it as two very different problems because... All right, so let's back up. It sounds like it's a reasonable thing to talk about. And yes. All right, Agreed. cool. We'll take that. And if it's not breaking, it could go with 3X. Yep. Yeah, I don't think it's breaking. Link inner join exception. Oh, I remember. Link doesn't quite work. Yeah. So, Cool. Be awesome if someone fixed that. That could be done in 3x. It's there, but it doesn't work. Cool, fix it. <laughs> Ability yes. to suppress specific NANT. Yeah, no, we're not doing NANT the tests. They're gone. Otherwise, reasonable request. Agreed. Agreed. All right. Firewall exception for multiple selectable all profiles. Is this different than the other one? This is the same thing. Also nice if this is the same thing. Oh, from the same person. Cool. So we only need one of these bugs. Um, oh, one request per feature. I see. So the second one, are you looking to enable the... All right. All right. So the comment's down here. So basically, he wants the ability to do this, and then... But this is the same text as any other thing. Oh. All right. I don't care. Which one... Do we want to keep both? It's still a reasonable request. Which one are we keeping? Or are we keeping both? Um... Man, uh, <laughs> hold on. I I gotta go back and find the other one. <laughs> I have it right here. Enable firewall exceptions. Fire multiple select. Just trying to look at them. Um, only be set for the current profile. Not sure to get a set of profile. Actually, this one I think is. Um, yeah, pick, let's pick, go. Pick one, pick one, dupe it to the other, and we'll go on. Or or keep both because they say something slightly different. You know firewall better than I do. Well, this one, if if we just just go by the t the title. This one's actually implemented. Oh, this one? So, yeah. Uh, sorry, 1963. 1960, that's this one. Cool. 1963 is, is implemented. Awesome. Let's call it fixed and let's move on. Yep. And, and this one's definitely open. We discussed it. All right. Awesome. These old bugs, I'm like, oh, there's only so much value in debating them. Yeah. Dynamic ability of attribute IS web app pool. Feature dynamic 
I, oh, yeah, the problem is that how do we then find it? Yeah, this is the ability to search and find and update and all those kinds of things. Yeah. I don't know how we implement this, but I know what they're trying to do. It would be nice to be able to do something like this. The problem is that these are the way that you identify the app pool, so if you can't find it later, then it all falls. You can't uninstall and stuff. Anyway. So, yeah, I guess it's a feature. I don't could be done in 3x, I think, without breaking things. It just loosens stuff. Okay. But... Yeah. Allow configuration of rights privileges. Bash login. Ah, yes. There, we're going to find a couple bugs like this. I remember seeing this somewhere else. Ah, there are previous similar feature requests. Yes. <laughs> fine. Cool. So, yeah, the ability to set rights. I think that's fine. We should... This is all per user stuff, right? Or, sorry. These User configuration apply. stuff, yes. Okay. IS certificate should support CNG keys. Uh, what? Okay. Pseudo ACL on a CNG. I don't know. Oh, IS certificate should support CNG keys. I see. It must, yeah. I expect it's not wrong. I wish there was more information about exactly what they want us to do with it. Well, we do know the person who submitted it. Oh, Eric. Uh, I guess we could toss it in 3x and okay, or we can suspend it. I'm, I'm, I'm above them. Oh, set. Oh, this is set at ACLs on certificates. That's oh, this is setting ACLs. Okay. Yeah, okay. It's setting ACLs on certificates. That's what this is about. Title's not terribly helpful. Should port support ACLing CNG keys. So that makes it better? It at least I know what this is for. I we could do it in three X. Someone could do it. Setting ACLs on a certificate. I don't know who's gonna do that, but we had some security buffs out there for a while. So anyway, it could be done in three X. Okay. Or we could suspend it because nobody wants it, but or it's never come up since then. But I don't know why it came up in the first place. Agreed? Uh I have no idea what a CNG key is, so a, whatever you it's want. It's a it's a certificate registration. So it's like do we want to be able to ACL the certificates, the result of the certificates? Um I don't know. Yeah, well, you can do it. So okay, it. sure. <laughs> it's basically <laughs> anything you could do, anything you could figure on Windows, we should support. We're going to be here a while, but anyway. 1935 refresh. 1935 is already gone. No. Yes. Wow. Did you really get rid of that fast? I opened it. It's fast. All right. This website thing works. All right. Allow com registration values need to be added with these. Right. This is the component categories. Yes, like toolbox. Yeah, see, we had a, bu a bug that was just... We just took one that was the same thing. Yeah. Is this... So, yeah, it's basically more of those. I don't know if it's anything new. Um... So, yeah, I, I don't know if there's anything new in here. Should we just keep the other one and let this well, one go? I'm, I'm wondering if which one's better. I think the other one is better. It had links to MSDN that are probably dead now, but at least it, <laughs> I think the other one's better. Um, it basically comes down to every single com attribute, we should support that. Yeah. I don't know how many there are, but, yeah, we could do that. So okay. I think that other one was better, and we'll just keep going. So I think we could stoop this to that. We'll do 
app ID incorrectly decompiled. Cool. That sounds like a bug that should be fixed. Bug, not feature. Wow, I think that may be the first time you've ever done that. <laughs> <laughs> Many times you convert a bug to a feature, but rarely do you do feature to bug. When I advertise an extension that is linked to a component, Dart misses it. Okay. Yeah, I could see it missing the advertisement. That could get fixed. Another he, feature that's a bug. Oh, you're right. You're right. That guy is the same guy. Compose advertising is unpopular by the Wix team. No, it's just me. I don't know if other people in Wix team think that way. <laughs> we have standard ones that allow. I haven't been able to find advertise that. You can do that. This is with XSL. XSL can give you that. Heat will give you the structure, and you can mark advertise on whatever elements you want. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. If you want to do it, it's not. It has all kinds of weird side effects. Don't recommend it, but you can do it. XML config to, in the default namespace with an empty namespace specified. XML config should read the default namespace and apply it automatically to new elements. No, you specify the namespace you want on an element. So you have to specify the namespace you want to put an element into. Otherwise, you can't put a name element into an empty namespace. Contains a default namespace. Well, XPath Circulation Language isn't our usage. So this is this is basically this comes down to it. it's the same as C sharp. If you want to put your element in a namespace, you have to specify the namespace you want it in. Just well, that's, it I'm I'm trying to understand the first paragraph. Is is the assertion that if you do provide a namespace that is the default? No. No, it, this is if you specify an element with no namespace, you get an empty namespace, which is different than the default. Agreed. Because the element okay, has that, no namespace. That's, that's why I'm. That's why I asked. Which is the same behavior that the C# -sharp classes will do. Yeah. I, I'm implied to say that's not the way these things work. <laughs> it's a pain, but that's. I don't know that we should do this. Well, certainly I don't think we should be reading the default namespace from a file that might or might not exist. And, you know, that that seems wrong. I think this is use the right namespace and you're fine. And this, uh, I bet the XPath selector works correct as well if you specify the default namespace. That's the problem. People think the default namespace is special, but it's not. You still have to specify it everywhere. It just saves you typing. So I don't think this is a real bug. Like, I don't think... I, I'd say it differently. XML does correctly handle default namespaces. It's doing it correctly. They just don't like the way it's being done. <laughs> and I s sometimes agree with them that I'm like, I really hate it when it behaves this way, where I'm like, I don't want to give you the namespace for the thing I'm searching for. Just find it's the default one. But that's not the way these things work. Then sometimes I'm really glad it works that way because then I'm like, oh, cool, I specified the namespace and I got the right one. And I didn't have to worry whether it was default or not and all that kind of stuff. So um, anyway, an XSL pattern implemented it wrong. <laughs> but XSL pattern is really old. And it was before a lot of these things were decided on. So, we could keep this as a feature as a to do this, but it would be a departure. It'd be like a setting. You know, find default namespace and apply it to, you know, and treat all name, non namespace things as default namespace. Basically. Do we uh, want that feature? No. So then, I don't think we want this bug or this feature request. Uh, yeah. That's what this is. 
I, I disagree with the suggestion that XML config, XML config should read the default namespace and automatically apply. That whole second paragraph, I disagree with that. Well, then that, that seems that's wrong. That's the crux of this feature request. Okay. Um, then. So the yeah, only I, thing that might be is that we should do more work in XML config to make it easier to apply na you know elements in namespace to apply namespaces to create elements in namespaces. That may be true, but I don't know if that's true. So that would be different though. Right. Uh, That'd be a usability improvement. Yeah. If if that's actually a problem. Right. So all right, cool. So no to this bug. All right, XML file, action, read. Yes, this is XML read. Yeah. Yes, totally good to have that feature. Ah. Web application script timeout max at 327. Oh, yeah, this is another one of those. Do we not already have this? I don't know if we had the same, but we had something like this. But this has to go to 4x because this will break the schema. Yep. So that's too bad, but true. Permissions EXO for an existing file. Is that not possible now? Oh, you probably can't apply it to... How could you apply it to an arbitrary thing? You can't do like a file, a file search. What's your parent? Yep. 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 Can't do that right now. Suppose we could. Doesn't look like ah. I'm looking at MSI permission EX. Yeah, it's all identifier too. So MSI doesn't let you do it either. So it'd be a thing for our custom action. I guess we could take custom action that did that. What about the new? No, the new one doesn't do it either. Okay. It's all based off of element. Got it. Your parent element. Yeah, so that. Okay. We That's the feature. Create folder and permission ex on an existing directory. This is the same thing. Except a folder instead of a file. Yes. That's interesting. I would have expected that to work. Since well, no, because it has to have an ID. Oh, but you could get this to work because you could get create folder probably to point to any directory. So this probably yeah. can be made to work. Yes, so this is possible. Because you're going to why, why doesn't it just plain work? It does just plain work. You just have to get your directory to point where you want it to. Well, the bug's saying it doesn't. Okay. If it already exists, the permissions aren't set. If it already exists. Oh, maybe because the Windows installer didn't install their component? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering if. Because, of course, the interesting bits that would determine whether the component was around are omitted, but... I, I'm inclined to say this should work, and if it doesn't, I don't know. But that's, this is me. I, I'd resolve the bug as it should work, and then... <laughs> nice kitty. That's Bob, not me, by the way. Um, mine are locked out of the office while I'm here. All right, so what are we doing with this bug? Um, Are we leaving it open for someone to go investigate and say that it should work, or fixed? Works for me. Great. John says it works for him. Perfect. Thank you, John. Saved us a lot of wandering there. Saved me from wanting to go investigate, because I really didn't want to investigate that one. Yep. Allow dark to output files in install directory structure. It has switched to allow files to be written out in a source structure that matches the installer directory structure. What? And does the file moves manually? 
Oh, it lays it out in source tree. It does. It lays it out in source file structure because that's what Wix by default. Oh, oh, dark, dark, slash X. Yes, slash X. Okay. Uh, refactor reverse engineer products. Um, sure, we could take that. I don't care, but someone else could do that. The fix app can't build multiple merge modules. Yes. Yeah. Oh, this is the problem with IDs. Yes. I don't know that we have a way of fixing this. Yeah, that's the pain. We could fix it. It could be done. But yeah. if someone really wants to do it, they could do it. It's really what it comes down to. It could be done. It's going to be a lot of work, probably, but it could be done. Yeah. Special characters. Following words get the same ID. True. In heat. Oh, no. No. No, just pre-processed and then um this smells suspended to me yeah fine I'm done with that good idea provide a nicer way to choose the install folder oh is our ugly is our install folder still Picking the install thing still ugly? It's MSI. It, it... No. Isn't Browse Dialog ours? I mean, that's ours. Sorry. The Browse Dialog is, but all the controls are MSIs. Right, but we it's don't... particularly ugly, isn't it? Yeah. It is. I agree wholeheartedly. But you could, you could make it look better within the limits of MSI. No. Oh. Sorry. I'm, I'm not... MSI makes it really ugly because it has the old school, like VB style controls for, you know, picking drives and. Oh, okay. I mean, you could replace it, right? You could replace it and not use any of the MSI controls. You could provide a custom action to pop up, you oh. know, the browse for folder, but you can't. Well, even that. No, that's. No. Well. Whether it's a good idea is a different question, but it's the browse dialog is designed a particular way, and I don't think you can get around that. Um, maybe the icons. Yeah, you could, I was supposed to say you can fix the icons. I think this is icons, mostly icon issues. Suspend it, and I don't care. It's install UI. I'm with Jacob. Use burn, <laughs> which you know has a browse to a folder thing built into it, or Wix standard BA has one, and you can write your own. So suspend it. Um. Yeah, I guess. I don't see. I don't see a better way unless we have. Cause we can't ship. Yeah, screw it. Yeah, there's no way to, without, we have to ship the icons, right? So we can't replace them without somehow having the copyright to do so, and I just... Okay. I don't care a whole lot. WorksCop allows users to specify how many spaces per indentation level. At our shop, we like tabs rather than spaces to one tab. No. Suspend it. I don't care. It's the whole thing about having having standards, coding style standards. That's what WixCop is. So white white space it is, not tabs. Yep. All right. That means you're getting our standards. Tabs are dumb. Okay. Everyone knows that. Not everyone. I'm working on someone else myself right now. More verbose error reporting. This is a crash. All right, let, let's kill this. This is a crash. We need them to send this to us. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do we do with this bug?
Yeah, so I don't know. Um, we could look at the code and see if we can see where it would repro, or we just, you know, say it's obsolete. Yeah, that. I vote obsolete because it will come back. Torch is used enough now. It will come back. If I'm it pretty, exists. If, I, I'm pretty sure this, sort of, this thing has been fixed in time. Okay. I, I, I'm just these, this old of a bug. If it hasn't been hit, people are not looking up this bug and going, oh, bug's already open, I'm not going to leave a comment. Yeah, 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 yeah. New element, custom table ref. Yeah, I'm okay. We, yeah, we could probably do this. This is probably the right thing to do. That element, we could do that in 3x. There's, there's ways of doing this, but they're a little kooky, so custom table ref probably is a good thing. Oh, this it, isn't just for patching. This is for anywhere. Yeah, just anywhere. It, it's kind of kooky if you have a custom table somewhere and you're like, I just want that custom table. Because it's a custom table, if it's in a fragment, it's hard to pull in. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a reasonable thing to do. There are ways of doing it, but it's a little it's a little kooky. So it's a reasonable thing to ask for. Custom action to identify the existence of a database should be added to a property in installer. Sure, we could add this to SQL Util and tell us if a database exists. Can be done. Can be useful. Okay. Support multiple databases. One SQL database definition. This is not true. In fact, I saw something just the other day that said someone was doing this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, this isn't true. You can have multiple databases. That can be done now. Create Unicode version of WCA is property set. Okay. Maybe we should give it to that guy that wants a WCA log, Unicode version of WCA log. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. It's basically somehow you ended up with a property that you got out of Unicode and then It, it, this is designed for hard-coded things, which is why it's ANSI, so you don't put a hard-coded Unicode string in your custom action, which just ends up bloating it. I mean, that's the idea. But if you were to get it from, you know, a string from somewhere and want to chuck that, you know, whatever, you know, and it came in as a Unicode string, yeah, I could see that being useful. Okay. There aren't many of our functions that need that, but... When we start installation, in some cases, you check if Windows services are running or stopped we need to check the status of Windows service. Okay. I guess we could have a custom action that would return the state of Windows services. Sure. I mean, could do that. Not much different than a database check. Right. That kind of stuff. Add patch support to MS Build projects. Yeah, we should do that. I have no idea how, but we should do that. Well, actually, do we? Sorry, did we ship Pyro support yet? I know we have Torch. I think we have the tasks. We don't have targets for them. Yeah, we don't have targets. This is very hard to do, given all the different ways that you can have your MSIs all over the place and stuff like that. But yeah. But yeah, I mean, we should do this. You know, figure out the right workflow and put it in. It might be a 4x thing. We could try to do it in 3x. Or do we just want to not try to do it in 3x and put it in 4? Uh, yeah. Because the targets are very different in 4. Yeah, that's that's a fair point. I don't... Plus, I want to revisit patching anyway the way that we're doing it, see if we can't get a little smarter since it seems like we're, we've got a couple dumb things we're doing that if we could just solve those. They're not dumb. They're just... Four design decisions at the beginning that if we could just solve them, we'd end up with a much better patching story. Well, I'm all about not duplicating work, so. Well, 
I put it 4x or let's put this I, I'm going to say we. I'm going to be a little more I think we should put this in 4x because let's not do this in 3x let's not disable 3x's targets as much I'm let's, fine with let's that. go do patch let's go make that a thing if we someone wants to do that let's make that a thing in 4 yeah to really go make that better Automatically no, remove from resources when removing a component. Removing a component from any feature without removing a feature in a patch transform is an error. Yes, we can instead add remove rows the only time this should component. Wah. Is that Do you want to put a component back in? You'd have to. <laughs> you have to leave the component there. You have to leave the component, no, make it transitive. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> No, this is crazy. I don't know. How? Yeah, I don't. Well, I mean, even if you you couldn't do it just by by detecting when the component is removed, because then yeah, you'd be crazy. You'd be crazy. You know, you'd have to put the component back and make it transitive with a false condition and add all of the. No, I don't want to get into the magic there. Yeah. No. Check min version required against new columns and tables. Supports back compatibility with lineup features, new columns. Older versions ignore them. Existing code in the linker that always verifies if you use new columns, your min version required package status. Set the version where those columns are first supported. It only generates warnings, should not be errors, but you consider some method. Yeah, no, because then you're going to get warnings when you have, like, you've marked your MSI to be 3.1, you're using 4.5 stuff, and you're going to start getting warnings about the fact that you're using 4.5 stuff, and you're like, yeah, I know. Leave me alone. Um, what? Right? Is, this is about going in and looking at if you're using any of these new columns, right? Yeah, but we already, like, we already do that with 4.5, right? If you use any of the shortcut features... Um, that were added in 4.0, we require you, we give a warning if you don't have that in your in your summary information. Really? We have a warning? I think so. If not an error. Can't be if an you error. actually use them. Can't be an error, because MSI will ignore it. Yeah, I, I, could, I agree. It might be pedantic, but not, not normal. Um, sorry, I'm I'm having trouble understanding why if you if you use a feature, even if it's ignored, if you use a feature, because if you set like let's say you mark your MSI as three one, so it'll still run on XP and up, and then you use the shortcut thing so that when your MSI is installed on Win eight, it doesn't look stupid in the start menu. It would be really annoying that you've built an MSI that can install an XP all the way up to Win 8 very well, like very cleanly, and you get this warning saying, by the way, you're using a, a 5.0 feature in a, a 3.1 MSI. I don't think we should do that. Because the Windows installer will light up as appropriate. And when you install, the right thing is going to happen, right? You install on, you know, XP, and you're like, hey, why is my shortcut stuff showing up on the start menu? Oh, that's right, because there's no start menu on Windows XP. <laughs> okay, um, I guess that's fair. Um, perhaps that one is a bad example. Um, there are things like, you know, uh, X64 was not supported before. Yes, that's an error. That's an error. Okay. Because you, so, you can't even... But this is about light up, not about things that will never, ever work. Like, you, you, if you take a 64-bit MSI and you send it down to Windows installer, what was it, 2.0? I forget how when it was implemented. Like 2.0? It'll just fail. Oh. So, I, I mean, I don't think we should do this in general. 
I don't think she should give warnings about things you're using that are going to light up. That seems like the opposite. Like that. That seems like the antithesis of light up. Yeah. Um, for light up, I agree. Um, but like currently we do today, if you have, um, if you're using any of the the resource lookup stuff for a shortcut table, we will throw a warning if you have not marked the MSI for four hour later. Resource lookup thing. Is that the resource DLLs? Display and description. Yeah, right. The resource DLLs. Yeah. I guess I don't know if that fails or not. I'd have to go look in MSI to figure out if that failed. Because if it failed the install, I would agree that it should we should err. Or are you saying we're warning? Well, we're giving a warning. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I I guess my okay. Yes, this is this is an interesting gray area. Um, basically, this this is a light up thing if you've also provided a fallback, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, so anyway, we did it. Um, it's there. It's been there for a while. All right. Well, we can resolve this fix, and I can go think about what that means. We we shouldn't do this in light. We can do this in the compiler. There's no point in waiting all the way to the linker to do this. Um, okay. Right. I mean, which, uh, as you've noted, it's all in the compiler. It's not doesn't need to be in the linker. Well, no, this this stuff is in the linker. That's in the linker? Yeah. That has to be in the linker? Is that the only thing I, I can tell? I'm not, saying, I'm not saying it has to be. I'm saying it is. All right. Well, then maybe this was implemented, and I have to go back and think about this. So I guess this is fixed. Well, no. No? Uh, not well, all of them? <laughs> exactly. And this is where this is a bad bug, bad on Heath for, for posting a bug like this. Um because, for example, what if you have, uh, you know, the, the new MSI 5.0 stuff? Yeah. And again, this is a, you know, theoretically you could light up to use the MSI 5.0 stuff if you're running on Win 7 or later um, and fall back to, say, the Wix custom actions if you're running down level. So I certainly agree an error would be a bad idea. Um, warnings are questionable. Um, but on the other hand, I would want to know if I was using MSI 5.0 functionality that it wasn't going to work if I, you know, didn't run it on, on Windows 7. So you, I, want the, I, you want the compiler, the, the tool set to tell you that? Every time you build? I want... Yes. I want that. <laughs> and then you have to suppress that so you can go, yeah, yeah, no kidding. I got it. Leave it, me alone. It, no, 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 no. Because, look, most people aren't going to fall back. This is the problem. Light up requires work that most people aren't going to do. Well, I would want to know. I, if, I'm thinking a lot of the functionality that just doesn't do anything down level, but all right. Well, I, I, I'm, I I'm like thinking it. of cases where, where, well, no, I'm thinking of those cases. What if you had, what if you used the new lock permission stuff? And you you ran your MSI on on XP. You're not going to get any of that behavior. It just disappears. It's in your MSI, but it's useless. Yes, I would want the tool set to warn me in some kind of a you know validation step. If this is not an ICE, it should be, or it should be something that the tool set does. Well, if it's an ICE, the tool set should do it. So. I well, aren't a cop out. No, um, but but it's that it's that level, right? It's not a 
you know, uh, core thing. It's a give me extra information about you know what's good or bad. All right. So what do we do with this bug then? Feature um, issue. Hit Keith over the head to like be more specific. All right. So let's kill this bug and say it's not specific enough, and then we will continue to figure out what we want to do with those other cases, which it sounds like we're already doing some of them, if not all the ones. Well, we've probably done all the ones we thought of, and we just didn't think about, oh, we added 5 stuff, let's go add more checking or something. Yeah, exactly. I think we yep, we probably stopped at 4 or 4-5. 4 probably. Well, fortunately, we don't have to go much further. Um, yeah. Yeah, right. okay. That so do you fine. want to keep this bug and say turn it into the go search for all the... I, I dislike the level of detail in this bug. This is, but now that you point out it was Heath, I didn't realize it's typical. So it's like too much detail of a specific way. Should we open a new thing that says review this and go add the warnings as appropriate yes. for all things? I mean, that's that bug's pretty generic as well, but I don't know any other way of doing it other than doing the search, enumerating all the things, and then opening bugs for all of them and then fixing them, which is not much better. Um, well, more importantly, I'd like to, I'd like for us to figure out what we want to do, and then we can figure out how to do that for each of those things that we find. Fine. So this bug goes away, and what do we get? We get something else in the end, or no? I'll, I'll open a new feature request. Okay. Generic feature request. <sighs> Lovely. All right. Let's just do this last one, because it's here. Add support for creating merge modules with patch certificate. Ugh. I don't care about either of those topics. Oh, this is the Lua patching? Yeah. yeah. Um. Um. Really? Probably can't have an MSI patch certificate table in a merge module, so we block it. That's what I was thinking. Because that's what the MSI SDK says. Yep. Yeah, that was me, um, <laughs> which is funny since I opened the other bug about catching things like that. Um, I'm ambivalent. I, well, I mean, obviously the, you know, sharing a merge module is fine if you have to, but, you know, this works just fine with Wix Libs, so... Um, The Lua patching stuff is interesting. I don't know that it's ever gotten a lot of traction. Well, patching in general. Use a uh, Wix lib, do it the right way, call it good. That's what John says. I'm generally inclined with that. Uh, suspend it. Suspend it. Fine. All right, so we got through two pages. That means 50, right? It does, more or less. So, all right, so what did we... Sorry, I didn't look. What was it? Was it 232, 236? 236. All right, sorry, 236. 191. Oh, man, that's not nearly as good as I'd hoped we get, right? Yeah, well, we actually it's talked about some of these bugs. 236? That's what we started at? Yep. Well, we didn't even get to 50, then. How do we not get to 50 and get through two pages? Oh, that's because some of them are... Some of these are taken out. All right, right, right. One, two, three... That right? It's Forty-nine. One, two, three, four. Hmm. Well then, bummer. Oh, because I uh, I know because when I started the second page, I actually started with one bug on the list already. 
So we did. We got through 49 bugs. So I think we all failed today. Oh, 48. Well done, Sean. Well done. He snuck his in there after us. So we do have a winner for the day. 48. I'm disappointed. However, we have broken 100. So that's something. Um, and I keep thinking these are going to get going faster, but they're not. So when do we get back to our days of 60? That was awesome. I guess day of 60. That was awesome. Right. So, we had one of them. That, that's That's not quite a pattern yet. Yeah, no. But look at this. We're down to like single digit numbers of pages of bugs open, which is cool. Um, so yeah, this is looking better. Anyway, uh, we'll get back to this on uh, Thursday, so a couple days from now, and maybe we'll get through 60 that day, or who knows, maybe we'll get through 90. No, it's not going to happen. Um, we'll do 60. I, I, we're out the week of Christmas. I think that's been decided, although it's still up in the air whether we bother doing anything New Year's Eve, so maybe we'll do something New Year's Eve. Um, just for fun, because then I would love to go into next year in the you know low hundreds, because then we could like go through January and be like, woohoo, no more untriage bugs, and then we'll find better things to do with our time during the slot. But for now, getting through this triage stuff is awesome. Going back to our old backlog, having looked at it, acknowledged what's back there, <laughs> even when we don't like what we find or do like what we find, we've almost crossed the threshold from four to five years, and that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Well, tipping point here. Um, although if we wait a couple more days, who knows? Maybe some of these will tick over in the five years. So, on that note, looking at bugs that are five years old, and by the way, on the last page, we have bugs that are nine years old, so we have a ways to go. Um, have a wonderful morning, rest of your morning, rest of your afternoon, or rest of your evening. I'll see you guys on Thursday. Cheers. Bye.